welcome to today's session on uh, flowchart now flowchart is not only used as a programming concept tool it is also used in project management and uh, it is important for placement activities also you will be surprised that many of the placement companies ask questions on flowchart here are some examples tech mahindra asked draw a flowchart regarding your experience of the whole day before the interview so this was asked to the people who were waiting for interviews tcs asked draw the flowchart of your final year project on this piece of paper they gave a paper and they asked to draw the flowchart wipro asked if you want to watch a movie then how will you decide draw the flowchart of your selection process okay and similarly we had seen hcl also asking some questions sometimes like draw process flow for getting a driving license so flowcharts are important for placements as well so how does flowchart look like this is an example which you can see on the screen like you can read out the first uh, box which says lamp doesn't work now in case lamp doesn't work we need to find out why it is not working so what we can do we can decide upon uh, a question like is lamp plugged in it can have two answers like yes and no if it is not plugged in what we'll do we'll plug in the lamp if it is plugged in we'll do what we'll check if the bulb is burnt out if yes we need to replace the bulb otherwise we need to repair the lamp now this is an example of flowchart so flowchart are what it's a type of diagram that represents workflow or progress it's a diagrammatic representation of algorithms we know that algorithms are what algorithms are step by step approach to solving a task and it illustrates the start and end of an activity now the question comes how to create a flowchart so we need to first know some building blocks of a flowchart like these are the building blocks we have start and end then we have a rectangular box which is for process we have a parallelogram for which is for input and output we have a diamond shaped box which is uh, basically used for decisions then we have connectors which is uh, arrows and we also have a display box apart from this we may have some additional uh, blocks as well but for now we are concentrating only on these blocks okay so let's come to the first one start and end now this shape is what a rounded rectangle now start is required for all flowchart you need to have a starting process time of the process when we need to start that some flowcharts may not have an end because there are certain processes which don't end uh, like uh, on systems so some of the flowcharts may not have an end but starting will be always there now for processes we have the shape which is rectangular the process involves action or the verb part of the flowchart like all the actions which are being done in the uh, algorithm will be represented here like examples are like add one if it is a machine like turn the light on turn the fan off fan off calculate average etc then we have input and output devices and on input output devices will be managed by uh, the parallelogram okay now this indicates manual operation because the transfer will be from process to the input or the output so like type in marks check in the balance so these will require the person to have some kind of input or output okay finally decisions the decision 
This shape is rhombus or a diamond shape, which we commonly call it. And the, the outcome is either yes or no. Examples, it can be like, is the number larger than five? It can be yes or no. Has the count of maximum number of people reached? Yes or no. So answers can be in either yes or no. And to connect all these things, we'll be needing arrows. So arrows indicate the flow of the chart, like how it is flowing. The flow chart generally is top down, but we can have sideways as well. But generally it is drawn from the top to the bottom. Arrows are drawn from output of one block to the input of another. Only one arrow can represent outputs. Multiple arrows may represent inputs. Okay, so these are some of the rules. So now you know about the building blocks of the flowchart. You know what is flowchart. Let's solve a problem. So take, for example, we need to count from 1 to 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on up to 9. And we need to print only the odd numbers, not the even numbers. So we need to count and print odd numbers. So we'll be printing 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Okay. So first task will be to analyze what will be the output. The output we have just decided it will be odd numbers 1, 3, 5. Okay. And if we have to represent it using flowchart, where will be the starting point? The starting point is always the first block is always what? The start. So the output will be 13579 and the start block is always the first. So we'll start with the start. Okay. And thereafter we'll have input because we have to give a starting value, initial value. So let's start the program from 1 because we have to print from 1 to 9. The program begins with the number 1. Okay. We have used the connector as you can see the arrow, arrows are there. And then finally print the number. So now because it is running for the first time, we'll be printing 1. So 1 will be printed. Okay. Thereafter, what we have to do, we have to skip the second number. We don't have to print the even number. We have to print only the odd number. So what we'll do, we'll add 2 in 1. So 1 plus 2 is now 3. So we have 3, but we have not printed that. Okay. Now what we need to do, we need to decide that, okay, we have 3 whether it is greater than 9 or not because what is 9? 9 is the finishing point where we have to stop. So we will use this uh, decision box to decide whether we have reached the final stage or not. Because 3 is less than 9, so we have what? We have no. So we'll go back here. So we can use the arrows to go back. Uh, to the starting point of print number and now 3 will be printed. So we have printed 1 and we have printed 3. So this is how the program will proceed. So again when we have reached the print number again we'll do what? After print number we'll add 2. So now 3 becomes 5. We'll test whether 5 is greater than 9. No it is not greater than 9. So the control goes back and again 5 is printed. Now this process will continue again and again and again and again till it reaches 9 plus 9 is printed, 9 plus 2 is 11 and then 11 is greater than 9 so it will say yes it is greater than 9. We'll add end at the end. Now that you know how to make flowcharts it's time for you to create a flowchart that shows how to make tea. Happy learning.